Good evening and welcome to the final Ask Libby webinar in the series. We're so glad you could join us tonight. My name is Elaine Harris and I'll be on the control panel for this session. And in a moment, I'll pass you over to Libby Wood, who's our national, PharmaQ's national dairy expert. Tonight, Libby will be coaching you on how to create a detailed farm plan so that you can be sure the right things are getting done at the right time. But first, let's quickly run through the system and how to use it. So the new viewers in the crowd this evening will know how to get their questions heard. Um, you'll see that you have a control panel on your screen. If you'd like to reduce or enlarge it, just click the orange arrow at the top of the panel. In order to reduce background noise, we've muted all of the attendees this evening. However, this definitely doesn't mean that we don't want to hear from you. We'd love you to participate, and there are two ways that you can do this. You can either raise your hand by clicking the little hand icon and we'll unmute you so you can ask your question, or you can participate through typing your questions and comments into the questions box on your control panel. Um, Libby will be sure to answer these throughout the session or at the very end. Now, we are recording this webinar, so if you lose your connection at any point, uh, no stress, just send us an email and we'll be sure to send you the recording link so that you can catch up on anything you might have missed. As I said before, please don't be shy. We're doing this webinar for you. So if you have any questions or something that you would like to discuss, please do make sure you let us know as we're happy to chat about any of the topics. Righto, uh, that's all the housekeeping done. Now I'll hand over to Libby so that we can crack into the interesting stuff. Hello, Libby. Hi, hi Elaine, hello everyone. Thanks for joining us. So yes, welcome to the sixth Ask Libby webinar in the series. Uh, so for those of you joining us for the first time, I'm Libby Wood, I'm the National Dairy Business Manager for FarmIQ. So let's get started. Scheduling. Today we're going to be talking about scheduling um, and how we can use scheduling tools to make sure we get the right thing done at the right time. Let's have a look at our agenda. So today, uh, first we're going to talk about communicating tasks. What are the jobs that we need to do and when do they need to get done? Then we're going to have a look at farm plans. So how do we pull those tasks together into a schedule that we can use? After that, we'll have a look at the tools in Farm IQ that can help us plan and make schedules. So we do make sure that the right thing is getting done at the right time. Uh, and lastly, we are going to have some time for questions. Um, and as Elaine said, I will answer these as we go through. So please feel free to type those in um, if you've got them as we work our way through today. First up, communicating tasks. It sounds like a pretty basic concept, right? Um, but we know it does get a bit more complex when we've got more staff and we've got more people involved uh, in the plan. Um, and keeping track of our own plans can be challenging enough, you know, just, just for ourselves when we get busy, uh, particularly around carving time and, and those, you know, high stress times of the year. So, you know, people have been using diaries and planners to help with this for years. It's, it's not a new concept um, and it makes sense. If we can get uh, all, uh, all the key info out of people's heads, out of these, these key, key players in our business, um, and if we can put that information into a plan, then everyone who needs to see it can see it, you know, staff can see at any time how far through the plan that the farm is um, and know what's coming up next. Having that transparency is great for, um, you know, getting staff buy-in on a farm. Everyone's on the same page and everyone knows, you know, what, what the goal is, where, where we're heading for the season. Once we've got this information out of people's heads, uh, we've also then got history. We've got traceability to see what we did last year. So when we're planning for next year, we've got something to work from um, and something to improve on. What is a farm plan? What are we talking about here? So a farm plan is a schedule for the season, um, what, are we, what we're planning to do in our farm business. Um, it's a preset plan that we can use to link tasks to staff members so they know ahead of time what needs to be done, what's coming up. We could create a farm plan for the whole season, um, or we could create a plan just for part of the season. Um, we might have, uh, within one farm business, we might have multiple plans running uh, for different enterprises or maybe for different herds. You know, for example, we might have a plan for, for autumn carvers and spring carvers uh, running, running concurrently. 
Um, and, and other examples of farm plans are uh, things like animal health plans that you might be doing with your vet. Um, it could be a shed hygiene plan that you that you need to do for uh, your compliance for your dairy diary. Um, or as I say, it could, it could be a carving plan. It could be a, a seasonal plan to take care of that um, bulk of those really busy times to make sure that we know what we've what we've got to do for it to be successful um, and to make sure that staff know what what's required for that to be successful. So again, um, those of you joining us, uh, uh, you know, repeat um, viewers will we'll see that we've had this slide a few times now. Why should we go digital? What's what's the benefit? You know, as I mentioned, people have been using planners and diaries for years now, um, but using a digital tool can help us to work smarter, not harder. Digital tools allow us to keep all of our data in one place. You know, if it's online, it's easy to access, um, easy to share with staff, um, and it makes planning a living process. You know, if, if we've got this plan that's digital, it's easy to tweak it if, if um, you know, something unforeseen happens, um, and it's easy for us to replicate it for future years. So really, doing these plans in a digital form is, is future-proofing that information future-proofing that asset that we have. So that's all I'm going to talk about today. Um, and we're actually going to go straight into uh, the demo now and have a look at these scheduling tools that we've got in PharmIQ uh, to help us make these plans. So if you just bear with me a few seconds, we'll get the system up and running. It's just loading up now. So for those of us joining us uh, again, you'll be pretty familiar with this uh, dairy farm now. So this is our demonstration dairy farm, um, which we've been looking at in all of the webinars. So I think that's just loading up. Perfect. There we go. So here's our, um, our demonstration farm. We've got our map loaded up as, as usual. We can see um, all of the things that we've set up there in, in previous sessions. What we're going to do today is we're going to have a look at this top right hand corner menu here. So this is where we um, we look at reports, we review information, we look at our diary, um, and where we create our plans. So I'm going to go into this icon here, um, which looks like a little calculator pad, and it's called Tools and Calculators. So when this loads up, you'll see we've got a few different options here, um, and we're going to look at this one in the top left-hand corner called Farm Plans. So we've just got a little bit of a blurb there. Um, telling us what a farm plan is. So it's about planning in advance, creating tasks required to generate particular reports, um, or broader plans of farming activities throughout the year. So we'll have a look at these now. Just bear with us a few seconds while it loads. Oh, getting there doesn't normally take this long. I have had a few internet issues today, so hopefully we'll we'll stay online for the rest of the webinar. Perfect. Okay, so we're loaded up now. Before we we crack on and have a look at some of these plans, I'm just going to give you a bit of a um, a heads up about what we what we're actually seeing here. So what are we what are we first looking at when we come into our farm plans screen? So we can see that this farm actually currently has two plans already running. So we can see we've got a cattle plan. Um, carving key date, um, and we've got a post wean drenching plan. In the next column over, we can see when these plans were last uh, updated, so last edited. Um, both of these were recently edited yesterday. We can hold any notes in here as well. So I might have, for example, alongside this, this uh, cattle carving plan, I might have a note in there saying something like it's it's for my autumn carvers or my spring carvers. So it's it's just a bit of a note to, to help remind you which which particular plan you're looking at. Next column over, we can see we've got key date description. So we'll look at key date when we when we dive into the plan. But uh, essentially, a key date um, is is something that the whole plan hinges around. So we can see that the key date for this, this top cattle plan here is the start of carving. Um, and that value is the, the 20th of July. So what that means is that this whole plan is hinging around our carving date and that is happening on the 20th of July. So we'll, we'll 
dive into that plan shortly and you'll see how, how that key date really affects the rest of the events and the tasks that we set up in there. Uh, so next column over, we've got a status here. So we can see that these plans are currently incomplete. So they're in progress. If we had tasks within these plans that hadn't been done and were overdue, that status would be sitting there as overdue. So I just want to draw your attention um, up to this status bar here. And we can see we've got a drop down menu. So the plans we're currently seeing are either overdue or incomplete. If I wanted to, I could tick complete and I'd be able to look at all of my historical plans that I've had running in the past that are now finished up. Um, and the benefit of that is if I've had a plan in the past that was you know, absolutely brilliant, everything ran like clockwork, great, let's use it again. I can come in, I can see my complete plan and I can copy it. So I can copy it ahead for next year um, and reassign the dates for 2019, for example. So that's just hidden, obviously, because once you once you start to use lots of plans, that list is going to get quite big. So we're just looking today at the, the two plans that we currently have running. So if we come over to the left here, we can see we've got the option of creating a plan. So this is going to open up a completely blank farm plan. Let's just have a quick look at what that looks like. So this is what we would use if we want to start completely from scratch. So you can see it's it's pretty bare. So we might want to come in and create a plan um, for uh, for carving, for example. So we'll stick with that example. We might want to create a plan for carving. So we can come in, we can give it a name. Um, so we might be looking at carving for next year. We can put our, our key date description in, which might be you know start of carving, and we pick our date. So we'll say uh, 1st of August, we'll just change that to next year. There we go. So we, we've got our basic information and for there we can start to build a set of events. So we, we create a group of events and then within that we create the tasks. So our, our group of events here, um, I might call my cattle main herd, for example, you know, my, my mixed age girls. And then from there, I can start to create lots of different tasks that make up my carving plan. So we'll, we'll dive back into tasks later. So you might be thinking this looks a bit difficult. You know, there's there's not a lot of, of help here. I'm starting from scratch. It's a bit too hard. Not to worry. We've got some templates in here that can help you create a plan. So you're not having to start, start completely from scratch. You know, we've got the bulk of the information already there and then you can just tweak it and make it applicable for your farm situation. So if I can draw your attention to the top right hand corner here. So at the moment you see on uh, the blue is on our plan list. So those are our current plans on farm. If we look on the far right, we have an option for templates. So this section here, um, Farm IQ has created uh, a range of different templates. Um, obviously, this is a, a dairy farm, so we're only going to be interested in our, um, our cattle plan, carving key date plan we've got there, um, and probably our post weaning drench plan is, is going to be relevant as well. Obviously, we've got other plans in here for um, sheep and beef and deer farms, um, so there's an option of having those uh, if you wanted to. So if I decide, yep, I want to look at this um, cattle plan, carving key date, um, I'm going to have a, have a look at this template now and I think that I want to use this. This is what I want to use as my starting point to, to create my seasonal carving plan. So we see uh, when I first choose that plan, we've actually got a little bit of a disclaimer here. So um, we are very much uh, not a veterinary uh, company. Um, so, that, you know, this is just a guide, this is just a template and you should do, be consulting with your own vet to make sure um, you're meeting your animal health requirements. So, just so that we don't get in trouble there. So we'll, we'll move on from that. And here we are. So here's our, here's our template and it doesn't look very much different to our blank plan at this stage. Uh, so if I come down here to my cattle set of events um, and actually hit that little triangle on the left, We'll see it's going to expand and show me all of the tasks that I've got um, as part of this cattle plan. 
So before we get into the interesting stuff, let's just let's just revisit the section at the top here. So we saw we name it. Yep, easy as uh, our key date description is our start of carving. Um, so what I'm going to do now um, is I'm going to put in our key date. So if I can just draw your attention down to this planned date section, I don't know if you can see my cursor moving. Um, if we're looking at that task at the top, at the moment it's saying minus 103 days. So once I populate this key date, um, so we'll, we'll say that we're going to start carving on um, 10th of August for sake of argument. Now, if we look back to this planned date, we can see that it's populated for, for us. Um, with dates in all of those tasks. So if we look down the list to about the seventh one down, we see we've got carving starts. And obviously we said that that was our key date. So if we look at that um, date in the column there, we've got 10th of August, 2018, brackets on key date. So this is what the whole plan is hinging around. So, so the plan is telling us if we want um, our carving to start on that date, then we need to be doing these other activities beforehand. So in the case of doing um, a boost selenium, for example, we're going to do that 103 days before. Um, and given that we've said that this plan is live now, um, it's also telling us that these tasks are currently overdue. Great. So what's next? So we've, we've created, um, we've, we've chosen our template, we've put our key date in, what do we do next? Well, we can look through this list um, and see which of these tasks are actually applicable to us. You know, what what's appropriate for what we do on farm? Um, are there things that we want to take out, for example? So um, we may um, we may not want to copper bullet our calves. So we could come in here if we decide not to do that. We can just delete that event out from the plan. That's it. It's gone. There may be other events that we want to put in here. So we might want to um, put some more information in around what we're doing with our calves. So we could come in here and add another event. Um, and we might want to put something in like disbudding, for example. So anything that's not in the plan, it, it's really easy for us to come in, just create that event and save it in there. So while we're, we're in this event, we'll have a look at the rest of the task function. So um, we can create a task for any of these events. Um, and if you if you joined us for our um, the, the earlier webinar we did around um, some planning and, and staff communication, you'll notice that tasks look a little bit different now. So that's because we've um, released some brand new features, um, which is why we're just going to have a few minutes having a look at these now. So this is the all new, uh, new and improved tasks uh, functionality. So we're coming in here, we're creating our event, our event um, and we've got set task turned on. So as before, we can assign a task to a particular person. So I might set this uh, disbudding task to our demonstration manager. Um, and then again, we pick a date. So the way we're working in this plan is we've got um, X many days before or after a key date, or we can do it on key date. So obviously, um, after key date is when we're going to be doing our um, disbudding, um, and we'll we'll just say for the sake of argument that we're going to do it uh, six weeks after. So from here, I can start to to put more detail in if I want to. Um, we, we've got the option of making this a repeating task. Obviously, for something like disbudding, that's probably um, not going to be something we choose to repeat. Um, but if it was something like, um, you know, a, a drenching task, we could put a repeat on, you know, repeat it again in, in four to six weeks, for example. Um, and we've got the flexibility around how often and how frequently we do that. So I'm going to leave repeat off because it's not really appropriate for this one. Um, and then we've got this menu to the right here, um, which we can start to, to build more information into our task if we want to. We'll have a look at add category. So obviously, de dis disbudding is uh, something relating to animals. So I'm going to pick from my animal category there. Uh, and then you'll see that we've got a big list of, of categories coming up. So I can, I can basically put a tag onto this. So any of these events, if I want to go back and search on this task later, I can go into my calendar, 
and say, right, show me all of my events around health treatment. So it, we might put this in as a health treatment. It's not strictly a health treatment, but that's that's the, the closest approximation um, because we haven't got a specific one for disbudding. Um, I could come in here and, and set my own category for disbudding. I could, I could put my own categories in there, um, but I'm happy to go with a, a health treatment for now. So I've set that category. Um, I'm going to save that. And we see now I've got a, a health treatment tag assigned to this, this event. So as I say, if I want to go back later on, um, I can search on it really easily. If I've got it wrong, I can change it. You know, I can delete the tag off there and pick a different one. So now we can see that as I have added a category, we've got a few more options appeared down the bottom here. So I can I can put more yet more detail and I can say that, yep, this is involving cattle. Um, I can put the spe specific stock class in. So it might be that we're doing um, just the heifers on this day um, or we're doing you know mixed calves. Um, and if I've created them as a mob in Farm IQ, I can actually specifically put them in here. So it might be um, my I so said we've got some calf sales here. It might be them. Um, it might be you know my, my replacement calves, for example. So I'll just pick this mob for now. Um, and I can go to the extent of putting a health treatment product in as well. So, you know, if we'd used some um, local anaesthetic for this disbudding um, when, when we when we went ahead and did that, I could pick that product from here as well. Then we've got that record that, yes, those cows, uh, sorry, those calves were disbudded on this date. And this was the, the health treatment product that was used. So we can see that this new task functionality um, allows us to be very specific still if we want to, um, or we can leave it you know, quite loose, quite, uh, quite non-specific and put that detail in later if we wanted to. So we've, we've, done our, we've added our category now. Um, the next thing we're gonna have a look at is a checklist. So a checklist is something that we can put into um, uh, any, any of these tasks. Um, and it's completely up to us what we put in here. So there's there's lots of different situations where we may want to use a checklist for one of these tasks. You know, if, for example, we were um, creating some tasks for reminding us to do our, our shed hygiene checks, we might want to put a checklist within that um, with a few steps in there, you know, to, to make sure that whoever's doing that is covering all the bases, you know, so things like checking the VAT temperature and and, and so on and so forth. So for this example, it might be um, something along the lines of, you know, if, if we were having a, a vet come in to do this disbudding, we might have uh, the first uh, task on the checklist is to, to book the appointment. The second thing on the list might be to do a, you know, do a health check, make sure that we've, we've got um, only got calves in the pen that are, that are healthy and ready to go and are, and are ready to have um, to, to be disbudded. So you get the idea. We can put as, as many or as few items in here as we want to. Um, and then as in this case, our, our demo manager goes through and works through this checklist, um, they can tick off what's been done. Um, and then, you know, as we go through, we can, we've got that traceability. Yep. Yes, the overall task was done um, and all of the, you know, the sort of subtasks in our checklist were done as well. So you've got that traceability to make sure procedures being followed. So we can put some notes in here as well. Um, we can we can make it a, a pass fail instead of um, saying that it's that it's complete. You know, so it could be, um, you know, back to that shed hygiene. You know, did did it pass the uh, pass the standard that we needed to meet, for example? Uh, so as I was to say, we can put some notes in there, and then we've got a few other options here. Um, we can actually mark some of these um, subtasks as compulsory. So. If, if we mark this as compulsory, um, the staff member is going to have to complete that section of the, the, the checklist before they can complete the overall task. So it's flagging to, to that staff member that, hey, this is really important. This is a really essential part of this task. Uh, we can also put some attachments in there. Um, so, you know, whether it's a document or a photo or something you want to add in, you can do that. Um, and then if also if we decide to take out a step from our checklist, we can just delete it from there and put a different one in. Perfect, so that's our, that's our checklist. Let's have a look at the, the remaining items on the right there in our menu. So we can add uh, attachments to the task as a whole rather than just the, the subtask. 
So for this this case, it might be um, it might be one of those help sheets from Dairy NZ. It might be um, a picture of the vet's business card. You know, it could be absolutely anything that's going to help this person achieve this task. So we can we can put those documents in from our computer or from the file library within FileMikeQ. So two really easy ways to, to add information to our task. And the last thing we've got there is a note. So it's just a free form notes field. If there's anything you want to put in there, any specific information that you want to communicate to the staff member um, or whoever's whoever's being assigned this, we can just type that in and, and put that added layer of detail in there. So that's uh, in summary the, the new stuff that we've got in tasks. And as you can see, there's, there's a lot more in there um, and it's a lot more flexible about how much or how little information you put in. So now we're happy with that task, I'll save it. And we can see that we've had that new task come in there um, six weeks after our key date. So at any point, if, if I wanted to, to tweak any of these events, I can go in, I can change the date, I can move them around, um, as I say, delete out the ones we don't want and add in anything new. So I can go through all of my tasks. You know, it, it, it is a little bit of work up front to get the plan set up, you know, get the detail in. Do we want to go down to the level of putting mobs, you know, our mobs in? Do we want to put what sort of health treatments we're giving? Um, do we want to assign it to staff? Um, we've got some shortcuts where we can assign it to all staff in here. So we can we can just blanket assign it to everyone on farm. So as I say, it is a little bit of a little bit of time just to get this set up initially. But once you've done that, you know, that's it. We, we save it. The plan is running. Um, and the next thing to talk about is turning on notifications. So we create the plan. We assign it to the right people. Um, and then we turn on notifications. So the right people are going to be told when the plan's about to start. So, for example, we might be saying uh, to the farm manager and the demonstration manager a week before, hey, this carving plan's about to start. You know, you got a heads up that all these events are coming up. Um, and then we've also got those notifications within each task. So when we get to our disbudding time, for example, our demo manager is going to get notified about this task. They're going to see on their phone all of the individual detail that we put in at this level. Um, and anyone that is assigned in here is also going to see the whole farm plan on their phone. So that's a, a, a new release that came out um, not long ago. So you can actually, through the phone app, see the whole farm plan. So as I, as I say, everyone's on the same page. Everyone knows what's happening. Um, and they've also got those individual tasks that they're responsible for going through to them. So once we're set up, we've got all the right people involved, this just ticks along. And as we work through the season, our tasks are going to flag up um, and make sure they're all aware of, of what's what's coming up. So we do get those right things done at the right time. Perfect. So we've created our plan. What do we do next? How do we how do we look at look at it? How do we dive in and out as we're working through the season to, to check on things and to see to see how things are panning out? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cancel out of this one because we've actually got uh, some saved already. So here we are back to our main plan screen and we can see the two plans that I've got running. Uh, so at any point I can come in here um, and I can edit my existing plans. So if, if something um, unforeseen happens, I'll just open up my tasks. You know, if something unforeseen happens, uh, we've got to carving now. It might be you know, maybe carving's not going, you know, quite to plan as we thought. Um, we've got a few that are late. We've got a few that are uh, maybe not have not carving so easily. So things are a bit busy. Let's push out that pre-mate check for our bulls. So I can just jump in here. I can um, edit my task, change that date, um, and just tweak things. Maybe if, maybe push it out a few days until things calm down a bit. So it's really easy to jump in here because it's a digital plan. We can just jump in, we can tweak things, you know, we might change it to be 25 days later, for example, just to give us a bit more breathing space. So that's happened now, it's pushed out to, to 25 days after rather than 22, um, and the rest of the dates are, st are still there for the, the you know, the, the remaining part of the plan. So 
that's the beauty of it being digital. You know, it's a living document. It's really easy to make those tweaks. So seeing things in a list view is, is all well and good. Uh, but if you're anything like me, you'll want to see it something uh, that's a bit more visual. So now we're going to come back to our, our plan screen and look in the top right hand corner here. Um, we've got something called plan calendar. So I'm just going to open that up. And we can see in a nice visual way our two farm plans that we've got running. So we've got our cattle plan calving key date in orange um, and we've got our post wean drench plan. Uh, which obviously isn't kicking off until uh, November when we're going to start to, to wean some of these calves. So you can see, you know, as we start to, to build up these plans um, and add more in, you know, it, it becomes very clear where the, the, you know, the real pain points in the season are when we're going to be really busy. Um, we can start to put other plans in here. I've got some farms that have created um, a plan here and put all the public holidays in. So you can see where they coincide compared to the, you know, the busy times of the year. Um, they've put in, you know, staff planned holidays, things like that. Um, repairs and maintenance plans. Obviously, not such a big uh, priority when, you, when you're thinking about calving um, and weaning, for example. Um, so it just helps you actually plan out the whole season and work out what those pain points are going to be. So we've got our whole year view here. If you have a look in the right hand corner here, we can see we can change to a month. So August is, is pretty uh, quiet at this stage. Uh, we're, we're into carving and we've got our pre-mate um, bull check in there. If we just flick through the arrow here, go through to September, which is again quiet. And then once we get into October and November, we've got a few more events happening. And we can see we've got more, more there. So once, you know, once we have too many options on one day, um, it actually hides it. So we have to expand it um, and this kind of flagging to us. OK, well, we're doing a lot of stuff here so we can start to use this as a plan. And we can we can use this and refer to our roster as well. So we might have a ton of stuff happening in one week. How are we going to make that happen? How are we going to pair that with our roster? And make sure that we've got enough people to get to get these things done in time. So from there, we can start to tweak some of these things. You know, it, it might be that um, we'll have a look in this one here. If I click on that, that drench event, um, we can expand it. We can change the date and we can start to do that tweaking here through a visual tool rather than a list. So I can adjust those dates. You know, we, we might put that the day before. Change it to 27 days. Save that. There we go. We've moved that one there. So very easy to come in, edit this and, and just, you know, fine tune that plan and make sure that we've got things happening um, at the right time. And we're, we're not putting too much pressure on ourselves to um, to get too much done um, in, in one go. Great. So um, here uh, here is our plan calendar, which is which is fantastic that we can see it here. Well, how do we share it? So we've got lots of different options about that. So we can we can print it. If we look in the top right hand corner here, um, it does a really nice print. If you wanted to blow it up, you know, stick it on A3, um, you can put it up on the on the inside of the dairy shed. You can email it to other people. Um, and of course, we've got the other option of, of giving people access to Farm IQ. So if we were thinking back to that example of an animal health plan that we might be uh, working on with our vet, we could give our vets third party access so they'd be able to come in here, help us create this plan. Um, we've, we've all got visibility of, of what's happening um, and that they can be there to support you within PharmIQ. Um, obviously, the benefits of doing that plan in PharmIQ is that it does link through to your tasks. It does link through to your staff um, and you've got you know everything in one place in one central location. So really easy to share. Um, and as I say, we can see this on our phone app as well. So we've literally got it in our hand when we're when we're out on the farm and, and actually getting on with with doing these things rather than thinking about planning. So we've actually covered quite a lot of this already now. Um, we'll just pop back to um, our templates here. So as I mentioned, we've got these we've got these templates set up um, and this is at a farm level. If you've got a, a multi farm organization, you can actually create a template at the organization level. 
So if you've got one that you want to use across all of your farms, you can create it at the organization level. And then each of the farms within your organization can draw down that plan and then implement it on their farm. So again, just, just a really easy way to, to get that plan down um, into a format that everyone can see um, and then share it across the relevant people, whether that's you know on across a farm or across um, different people within a farm. Great, so I see we've got a few questions come in. So I might just pause now and have a look at those. So the first question here is, uh, hi Libby, does the task set in the farm plan show in my diary or my calendar? It absolutely does, thank you for that question. So certainly we can see it in our farm calendar here um, and where we can see these events, we can click into them and drill down and see that extra layer of detail. We can also see these events when we go into our farm diary. So we'll just pop in there now and have a quick look um, at different ways that we can we can find these plans. So our diary's just loaded up there, um, and I can see one of these events already. So we've got that pre-mate check for our bulls that we created, and we, if you remember, we changed that date to put it on the 11th of August. So when we drill down and look at that event, we can actually see another layer of detail. So we can see um, we've got our pre-mate check, um, we've got the date, um, and we've got the tag. So this is the searchable tag that we've got on here. So um, if I was to go into my filters at the top here, I can drill down and look for just health tests and checks, for example, and it's going to give me all of the events in my diary with that tag on it. The other really helpful piece of information here is we can see in this blue box that this task is related to our farm plan, our cattle plan and our calving key date. If I was to click on this, it's going to expand it and we're going to go back into that, that, that plan. So from here, I can also edit this task. So I can edit from my calendar, my, my diary here, and I can also edit from in that plan screen. I can also come in here when I've done the event and mark it as done. So again, we've got that visibility in our diary. What we've done is searchable, it's traceable, everyone's on the same page and can see where we are. Perfect. Um, we can also see this, uh, uh, we can also mark this event complete um, from our phone app too. Thank you for that question. Okay, what have we got next? Uh, bear with me, I'm just reading this question, it's a bit long. Cool. So the question says, uh, so you plan out the season and then you edit as you go to reflect what you actually did uh, to produce a past year record for planning and budgeting. Yep, absolutely. So, so we create the plan, we put in when we think these things are going to happen. Um, and then we come in and we, when we mark these events as done, so we'll just have a look at this example here. We see that if I say that I have done this pre-mate check on my bulls, it's asking me what date I did that on. So this is also going to update in my plan. So I'm going to see, OK, we plan to do it on that date. Um, we actually did it on this date. So if I save that now, um, it's marked as complete. Um, and we, we, so it's actually going to disappear from this list because we're only currently looking at um, incomplete tasks, but I could go in and search on it. I'd see it as a completed task and we can, you know, the, the date that we actually completed that on. So the second part of that question, um, does the plan duplicate as a starting template in the next year? So that's something that we can choose to do. Um, you're absolutely right. So if I just jump back into my farm plans, we'll have a look at how we can copy these plans. Just bear with me while the screen loads. Cool. OK, so we'll say that we're at the end of the year and we think that this carving plan was absolutely fabulous. You know, it went off without a hitch. We would love to just replicate it for the following year. So I click on this triangle uh, arrow to the right there and I can hit duplicate. So the system wants me to give it a new name so we can differentiate it. Um, and I might call it my cattle plan 2019. And what I can do is I can advance the event dates. So in this case, I'm going to advance every single date by one year. 
So my plan, my new plan here, when I save it, it's going to be exactly the same as my 2018 plan. But all of those dates in there are going to be changed to 2019. So if we just jump in and have a look at the new plan, we can see there that our carving date was the, the 20th of July 2019. Um, and if I look at my replicated plan, we can see all of these dates here are happening in 2019. So it's exactly the same plan. We've just rolled it over a year. As I say, you know, there's a little bit of work first up, but once you've done it, you're away laughing. Cool, that was a great question. We've got a few more, so I will carry on with these questions. So the next one here is, how many people can set up the plan? If there is a need to change a plan, can all staff do it as that could cause confusion? Yep, you're absolutely right. So everyone that has access to Farm IQ, we can give them a different level of permissions. So if we're just having a look within this farm plan we've currently got, um, we'll, we'll use this notifications to, to illustrate this. If I turn on send notifications and we look in that list, we can see that I actually only have two people to choose from. So these are the two people within this farm that have got permissions to create plans and to edit them. If we look um, at an individual task in contrast, if we look at this um, Selenium Boost, if we just edit that, we can see the, if we look at this assigned staff option, I've now got my full list of everyone that's assigned to this farm. So we, we can see that we've got those different levels of permissions working there. So on this farm, we've got two people that have the, the um, permissions to create the plans and edit them. Everyone else in here, all these other, all these other staff members um, are able to, to view the plan, they're able to be assigned tasks and they'll be able to complete their tasks. So that's how we get that um, you know, security that, that the plan's not going to be going to be altered by just anyone. Um, and you know, we, we know that the, the, you know, the plan's gonna run to schedule. We've not we've not got too many, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen um, trying to, to, to manage this plan. That was a good question. Thank you for that. Great. OK, uh, that looks like uh, all the questions at the moment. Please do keep those coming in. What I'm going to do now is just show you a few more of, of the new things that we've done in terms of tasks and planning. Um, and then I think that will be it for today's session. So. Um, that's it for plans. We'll, we'll have a look at some of the new task stuff. If we head to the very top right hand corner of the screen here, you see that we've actually got a brand new icon that we haven't had in any of the other webinars. And this is our new task section. So if I click on that, we can see that I've got uh, lots of different choices here. So any task that I have um, has been created and assigned to me, I'm going to be able to see in, in my task today. So these are the things that are coming in that I need to do today. So it might be um, that, you know, that, that pre-mate check, we might be doing that today. I'd be able to see that in here as a task that I need to do. Um, and we've got a little counter to show me how many of those tasks that I've got. We've also got a future task section. So any of the tasks that have been assigned to me uh, but may not be happening until next week, for example, are going to sit in there. You know, when we come up to that, um, if, if that disbudding example, for uh, for instance, you know, if that had been assigned specifically to me, um, as we're coming up to that, I'm going to see that in my future tasks. From both of those, you can see that I can actually create one on the fly. So if I if I think, oh, actually, I need to remember that I have to do this. Um, I can just create a task and put a note to myself um, or to somebody else. You know, if I've assigned a task to someone, someone else on my team, I can create that from here too. Um, and it's the same, the same functions as we saw when we looked at our planning tasks in the in the farm plan. So again, I can put as much or as little information as I want. You know, keep it basic or make it detailed. So there's my, my task today in future. Um, and we can also see overdue tasks. So we can see here that we've got one task that's overdue. Um, we've got a, a training certificate that was due to expire. So this is something that I have yet to deal with. 
if I've actually done that, I can come in and just by um, ticking it here, I can say that I've completed it. Um, and again, that's going to show as being completed today in my diary. So I've got that traceability, you know, who's done what and when. Cool. So just a snapshot view of our tasks there. Um, and I should point out that whatever screen you are in in FarmIQ, so whether I'm on the map, whether I'm in the middle of running a report, um, I can just jump into this option on the right here um, and put a task in without affecting what I might be doing in the rest of the system. Two brand new features that we've got here are, is, um, is a, as a farm to-do list. So this is a little bit different to, to tasks. It's um, it's, it's quite non-specific, so I can literally go in and type anything in here. It might be, you know, uh, remember to fix a trough. It's it's the sort of things that you might have on your whiteboard in, in the dairy shed. You know, it's when staff have finished doing their, their main jobs for the day, if they've got, um, you know, some spare time, what, what list can they look at to, to pick up a job to, to just go and do and fill in that time? So it's non-specific. You can see that we're not assigning these jobs to anyone in particular. This is something that every staff member can see. Um, it's on here, it's on the phone, so anyone can, can jump in and say, okay, what can I do now? So we've got something that was completed here today, which has got a line through it. Um, I might have picked up that tail paint this afternoon, so I just tick it off to say that it's done. When we uh, roll around to tomorrow morning, those completed tasks will have gone. Um, and we'll just be left with the stuff that's to do, that's still remaining to do. Uh, but I can go in to my history and see, you know, what was done yesterday. So I've still got that traceability of, of things getting done. I just don't have that detail um, that I would have if I put it in as a full task. The other thing we've got here, uh, very similar, is a farm shopping list. So again, just type in free form text, uh, little reminders so anyone can see on their phone, you know, if they happen to be going to town, uh, while I'm here, I'll pick up that drench and I'll pick up that tail paint, for example. Once they've got it, they can tick it off. So it's all real time, you know, you're not going to have double up with someone thinking that it's, you know, still to be picked up. Um, again, this is going to hang around for the rest of the day um, until the following morning, you'll just be left with the stuff that's still, still to get, still to pick up. Um, and at any point, I can just um, type something in there, you know, wrong time of year for it. But, you know, I might might need to remember to go and pick up some baling twine, for example. So um, free form, really easy just to, to jot those things down as and when. And as I say, it's available on every screen. So I can just jump in here um, and add something to it. Great. So that's all of our new stuff. And that's uh, ha as to having a good look at everything that we've got here in terms of plans. So we'll go back to the, the questions now and see what else we've got. I think we've got a few more come in. Great. OK, so we've got a question here. How do you archive past year plans for future reference with seasons like uh, I think that's saying El Nino and La Nina season? So obviously the, the, the weather patterns that, that we've been having over the last few years. So um, I'll just jump back into our plan screen. And we can look at a way that we can achieve that. Great. So that's something um, that I would be putting in my in my notes section here. Um, so I should I should have actually done that when we were in there. So I put my note in. Uh, we'll just we'll just do it in here. We'll go and edit that one. I'll go down to my notes section at the bottom, um, and we'll say that this one was the um, L. Oh, I can't type El Nino year. I'll save that, and that should pop up into our notes section once I've saved it. So just while that loads up, perfect. There we go. So we can see that this plan here, the year we did that, that was an El Nino year. Um, as we come to the end of these plans, the system is automatically going to archive them for us. So once it sees that we've come to the end of the date range and we've completed all of those events, it's automatically going to know, OK, that plan's complete because you've told us that you've done all the tasks. From there, I can come into my status bar. I can click complete um, and it's going to show me 
all of the plans that I've got on this farm, whether they're incomplete, um, overdue or complete. So I, I can come in here and I can just pick that option, for example. So for this farm, um, it's a new farm. We haven't got any historical plans, um, but you would be able to see those um, if we did have them. So that's how we can achieve that. So yeah, we can put our notes in there and the system is going to do the archiving for us. It's all there for us to search upon. That was a really good question, actually. Thank you for that. Cool. So if you've got any more uh, questions, please feel through there. Yeah. Please feel free to type those in. Um, we've got a few minutes left, so I can cover some of those. I uh, see. We've got, oh, here we go. We've got another question come in. So how do we give access to our vet for an animal health plan? So we've got a few minutes and we can cover this. So if you've got a vet working with you, um, probably the best way to give them access is add them as a third party user. So to do that, I would go up to my people section here and I would come down to this third party access option. I'll just click on that. And from there, I can search uh, people that are, that are set up as third party um, and I can add them to the farm. So we can see that I've been add to, added to this farm already. Um, I can go in and search for somebody. Um, so if if your vet, if you come in here and search for your vet, for example, um, and they're not here, then you need to let us know and we will add them to the list. So I'm just going to search for. Yep, yeah, here we go. Here's a here's a vet that I know of. So we'll say that we're going to add this chap to the farm. Um, and we can decide what level of permission that we want to give him. So we might just give him view only. Um, we might give him the option of of being able to, um, you know, record information. We, you know, we might want this guy to actually come in and help us build this plan. So for now, I'll just leave him at view. Um, once I save that, my vet is going to get an email inviting him to come and have access to my farm. If at any point I decide, you know, I, I might not be working with this guy this year or he leaves, for example, um, I can take away that access at any point. So it's just a case of turning them on and off. So as I say, if, if you're looking for your vet or a consultant and they're not in there, let us know. We add them to this database and then once they're in there, you can go and search them and invite them to your farm. Uh, just bear with me. I'll check for see if we've got any more questions. Great. OK, well, it looks like we've answered all of those. So um, I think that's a wrap. So we've had a look at um, creating tasks we've had a look at communicating this information to people within um, within our farm business um, and we've had a look at creating uh, one of these plans using a template so as i say we've got those templates there but if you want to do something completely different you can create a plan from scratch to, to cover whatever it is you need to cover so just bear with me two seconds and we will pop back to our powerpoint going the wrong way. So we are now uh, at the very last webinar of the series. So thank you very much for, for joining us over the last few weeks. Um, it's been great to have your attendance and we've had some fantastic questions as well. So thank you for that. Um, if you would like to go back and view any of the webinars that we've done in the series, you can view any of them on the Ask Livy website. Um, they're all there and recorded. Um, and you can view them as many times as you like. Um, so again, thank you for thank you for joining us. Um, it's been great to, to share this uh, Farm IQ experience with you. So good night.